I'm Caleb with Means Woodshop, and today I'd like you to join me in making this awesome beer mug so you too can pop some cold tops with the boys. Welcome back to Means Woodshop. You're going to be joining me today making this beer mug. I made two of them already. I don't have them here with me, so here are some pictures. And since we're going to have to run this through the table saw, we need a straight edge on this screwed onto this plywood that's going to joint this edge and then we could take it off and do it on the other. Let's do that for your dead burn eye protection. Now we can smooth out this side. Okay, so now that we've got our sides squared up, I'm gonna, I have the fence set to a particular thickness that I want, and I'm gonna try to get as much strips as I can off before reaching all this, I uh, don't know, rot. Okay, so what I've done now is I cut a test strip. We're gonna measure the dead burn thing to see little, some people call them staves or staves dabs or you could also call them slats you call them sticks I don't, I don't i don't give a damn what you call them so i'm gonna mark seven and a half and just see how many of those i could get out of one dead burn piece of wood So I could get at least five slats out of a single strip, and I was going to cut, I don't know, a couple of these, and that works out really well for me. On a side note, it's pretty hard to film today because I forgot my dad burn tripod at home. So you're sitting on top of a big old shop fan right now. Get the old lung protection on. I keep having to look because I keep forgetting what side is the bad side. Does your dad burn eye protection ever fog up on you? Mine does. It's probably Texas. Okay, so I just wanted to point something out. One thing I'm noticing as I'm cutting through these slats is look at this this piece went through the table saw really nice as you can see it's laying the, the surface on my table isn't totally flat but you know this piece is you know it's sturdy and I just cut this piece and it's got a bow in it I don't want to run this long piece through with this going on so what I'm gonna do instead is I'm going to cut out my my seven and a half inch sections on this using the miter gauge. All right, we set up the fence with a dangle stop block. I really don't have a good place to set y'all while I do this. I'll keep y'all in this little screw box. If you want to know, this is what you're sitting on. This particular wood kicks up a lot of dust too. Like, I've had some pretty dusty projects, but this particular board, man, I don't know what, I don't know. It did come off a pallet, so. I'm just gonna eyeball this last little piece. How big was my eyeball at? Oh! Look at that. See? That's how my eyeballing was. Rarely. Using the mire gauge may be even better because now I can inspect each individual one and see what is going to be a piece that I don't want to use and pieces that I can use. We going to break down this now. Hopefully, I don't know what's going to happen with the camera being on here, but uh, 
We'll find out. What I'm about to do now is I'm about to rotate my blade to a 12 degree angle. You can also experiment with the thickness and the bevel as well. One other thing I'd like to note too is on my little things here. Uh, some people I see them, they set their blade to their angle and they run it through and then they flip it around and run it through again. One thing I like to do, and I, you know, this is one of those things where I don't know if it's right or wrong or, or what have you. I find I get a better result if I run them all through on just one edge, and then after that, I readjust my fence. I usually tap it just a hair over. As if you're not like me, you could just cut a whole bunch of these at once, so you'll be you'll have plenty when it's time to assemble. Or you'd be like me and just cut however many you think you're gonna need real quick, and then do a test fit and figure out just how many more you need. So I reckon. Probably gonna take us about five more. Okay, I made uh, some more test piece, so this is take two. It'll never be take two again. Oh, hey! Dad burnt tapes in the way. Okay, so now we're gonna do the real thing. And here we're gonna do the real glue up. And we got this framing square here so we could lay down each one flush against there so they'll all be even on the bottom. My wife seems to think she has better things to do. <laughs> and I'm using this Gorilla Tape because every cool guy out there uses the blue painter's tape to do their beer mugs, and I've tried it, and it, it, it doesn't work for me. When I go to put them together, they just like they crumble. What the hell is that? It gets creepy here at night. There's all kinds of weird sounds out there. have any room left. Get you some dad burn glue. I'm just gonna squish the glue right down the bevel. And you're gonna have a lot of glue squeeze out so don't don't lose your don't lose yourself. See look at that look at all that glue that comes out. It's okay. I think the glue up is always the scariest part of making these mugs. I'm gonna set it down and we're gonna let it dry overnight. I like to let my glue cure up on this big old weight because the wood glue won't. We'll let it cure overnight and the good thing for you is you're gonna see the next step in like half a second. Let's see, I gotta go home, I gotta go to bed, I gotta go to work in the morning and then when I get off of work I can mess with that. You're gonna see it right now. Alright, welcome back to day two. So, while it was only like a second for you, I had to, I went home, went to bed, well I watched some TV, then I went to bed, then I got up at six in the morning, I went to work, been there all day, and then I went home, had to get some more stuff, and here I am again. I brought uh, my beer mug, the one I made for myself. Let me come around and show it to you. And this one is all walnut and I got some bent oak around it. The inside is coated with epoxy. And I 
I've been using it and it's been watertight and it's been great and I love it. Also check this out, I've never had this happen before. I went to check on the one we were working on and it was stuck on that weight that I put it on. I, I The last couple mugs I've done, I've put it on that weight so the wood glue won't stick to the metal but it did and it was really solid on there and it like I don't know what this is this black stuff on here weird I don't know what it is and there's a glue seam of totally wet glue and I don't I, it hasn't happened to me before I guess I could you know I'm gonna clean this glue off all the the rest of it looks completely dry everywhere else it's just that ring around the bottom and I don't know why it did that I don't even know if that's gonna sand off but another problem I had is my slats are a little bit off and I think it's because even though I had it up against the framing square I think the tape was at an angle when I put the slats on there so when I rolled that tape it wanted to straighten out and kinda curved at an angle but we have a way to fix that and as you can see I got some unevenness up here so we, we do have a way to recover from that. You know, one thing I'm going to do before I even go as far as undoing that is I'm going to glue these pieces together and have them drying for either the handle or the base. I've got this material I use to make the mug to do a handle and a base. So it might get a walnut base, but I would kind of like the handle also to be uh, the same type of stuff. So. Let's get to gluing this on. Squeeze out going, happening here. Really don't know what to tell you about squeeze out besides just uh, sand it off. Get as much off that you can and then sand it. Set that to the side to dry. Okay, so I've wiped off as much of that weird wet glue as I can. We're going to untape it and see how the rest of it's holding up. This oak, I don't know what, I swear this is oak. It looks like oak to me. It has the same grain pattern as a lot of oak I've used, but I've never seen that red and like different shades of brown in there. I mean, look at that one. That's totally oak. But it's just, that's that's too cool. It looks good, even with this glue all over it. Remember when I said we have a way to remedy uh, the uneven top and the weird messed up bottom? Let's do that. Was I recording any of that? this weird mishap I'm gonna do the same thing on the back but you know how I do it now so I'm not gonna show you that part okay, so now the top and the bottom are clean and nice now what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna give this whole exterior and top and bottom a good sanding this project like you know we cut it we assembled it and the rest is just sanding, 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 sanding. Like almost more than half of this project is sanding. We your dad burn lung protection. I think y'all have seen enough. One thing I'd also like to mention when I'm sanding a mug is a lot of times I'll kind of do like uh, both uh, both sides and what I mean by that, I don't know what to do with this so I'm trying to talk to y'all because it's like touching my Adam's apple make me feel like I'm going to vomit. Uh, I'll like kind of focus on just this top half and then I'll go all the way around and then I'll kind of flip it and go on the bottom half. Unless something catches my eye then I'll kind of flip back and forth. 
sanding's done, and uh, um, let me come over there. Look at the way this wood looks. Like what? I saw that board. It was a pallet board laying around at work that broke off a pallet, and the housekeeping guy actually threw it in his little dumpster thing that he carries around with him. And I, I just saw it, and I was like, I saw the red and brown swirling through it, and I was like, no, you can't throw that away. So, next step. Are you dry yet? <laughs> anyway, we're gonna kinda just, we're gonna sand it and see how it goes from there. I'm gonna try to be really careful with it. You saw me sand this. You know what sanding looks like. I'm gonna sand this. Now this is most deaf gonna be our hand. I didn't show the glue up, and in case you missed it, it looked something like this. So now we're gonna draw a cool handle design on this block we glued up. And I think in all this damage on the back, this bug, I don't know what that is, maybe bug damage, rot, I don't know, whatever, who cares. I'm thinking that's gonna look pretty dead burn neat. Um, so we already got a flat edge, so I'll just start based off of that. Can you see that? That's our handle design. And we'll cut out that handle design with the jigsaw. Okay, so actually the jigsaw was way too rough and it actually broke my glue joint like I was talking about. And I never use, I've never used a scroll saw before. And I had just had a hell of a time wrestling a blade in there, but I think I got it. So let's try cutting it out like that. Scratch the scroll saw, lack of experience, crappy scroll saw, I don't know, but here's my handle. My glue up broke, kind of like I suspected it would, but I got it cut, and it ain't pretty right now, but the miracles of sanding. Just because of all the trouble I've had, I'm going to glue it to the mug before I even sand it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue these pieces on, and then I'm gonna glue it onto the mug and hope that clamping pressure will hold this in place and affix it to the mug. As you can see, I got this glued up and I'll come back tomorrow and see how well everything's held together. Uh, hopefully it'll hold up. I mean, wood glue, wood glue's pretty dead burn strong, so I, I'm pretty confident that it'll be fine. I just, this is kind of a big mess, but you're gonna find out in a second how this went. I don't know how it's gonna go, and I have to, tomorrow's Friday, so I gotta do the whole process all over again. You're gonna find out what happens right now. Time to see how this glue up turned out. By now, you've probably already seen it. Feeling pretty sturdy. There's our glue up, and as you can see, I got this rim around the bottom that's gonna have to be taken care of, and there's a lot of sanding and cleaning I'm gonna have to do on this handle, because that's it's not looking pretty. Reckon I'm gonna get started on that. Okay, when I was in the woods, just now, I went out and I cut these strips of bark. I think they're gonna look really cool acting as our bands around here. But I think before I put those on, I'm gonna coat this whole thing in mineral oil. Mineral oil, Dad. Did that work? Don't say that on my video. I'm gonna leave it in there. So I use a spray-on poly 
which is what I will also be using on this. But the one thing about the spray on poly is it goes on real good and dries really fast. But how my wood looks after a sanding, that's how it looks after spraying that on. And I want to put something on here first that's really going to make it make the grain pop. I'm gonna go show my dad before I put the strips on. Now we're gonna put these bands on. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna put wood glue on it, and then for decoration, I'm gonna put some fancy, elegant silver studs in it. They're thumbtacks. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'll glue on my shirt. You know how many shirts I've ruined because of wood glue? Now I can put my decorative stud thumbtacks all the way around this. Now that these four are holding it in place. So the last thing we did was do the spray on poly and then that's drying and dries really fast. I was kind of in a rush so I didn't record it but it just looked like I'm dumb because when I left the shop, I forgot my good camera there. So I'm using an old camera and I don't, I don't know how well this is going to look. Moving on with the project, this part you could do in your shop or in your house like I'm doing. The mug's done, but you want to drink out of it, don't you? You don't want it just sitting around on, you know, maybe, maybe you do want it sitting around as a pretty decoration. Who am I to judge? I want to drink out of this thing, so we got to make it drinkable. There's, there's a couple ways you could do that. One, you could do a coat of beeswax on the inside, and that works fine if that's what you want to do, but it's one of those kind of maintenance type things. You're probably going to have to do it again every so often. My brother-in-law has a drinking horn, too that he drinks out of and it has a weird smell to it and I don't know if that's the beeswax or the horn there is another way a one-time thing that is not a maintenance finish and it'll seal this up watertight it'll always be good to go we need to pop some cold tops and we're going to mix up some clear epoxy to put in here can I make a video junior don't you knock that down. That's Junior. You could be a real cool fancy lad and get some cups that got measurements on there. Or you do like I do. And I took a popsicle stick and I put a line on it and I press it firmly against the bottom of the cup and I fill it up to that line. It doesn't matter where you put the line. Just as long as you fill up each cup with that, it'll be even. I don't know what the hell that was. My neighbor's like having a party right now. And it is right at the line. Now we're gonna do B. We get our third cup. You're going to want to mix this type of resin for two minutes. I'm going to speed that up, but since I can't speed up real life, I'm going to listen to some Mike Nesmith while I stir this. It's thick enough to where it hurts my wrist. I'm going to pour this directly into the mug. Just let it flow. Rogue epoxy drip. I'll wipe that off right on my shoe. So I've got the epoxy in here. What I do now is I just act like I'm about to pour it out. And then I tilt it. And I just let it coat everything it can it can get 
on the inside. Now normally I would keep doing what I'm doing right now for a while before I do this, but I'm going to go ahead and do this part now. Is I, get, I swirl it around to coat the uh, sides as much as I can, but I can't go all the way to the rim or else it's going to pour out on me. So what I do is I get a brush and I coat the top. is I like to just dab some epoxy around the lip of this. So, thank you for joining me in making these awesome wooden beer mugs. If you like what you see, I'd like to invite you to smash the MF subscribe button, hit the like button, and uh, I'll see you next time. Boys, cheers!